Welcome to the Why Willie Podcast Show. I'm Willie Cologne and he is... JJ, baby. Let's get it going. JJ, we have arrived. I know the people have been waiting, waiting Ooh. for this. The reality guys have been talking and they said, you know what? There are two handsome gentlemen I would love to hear their opinions from. Uh, there's a guy by the name of Willie Cologne, Super Bowl champion. You can catch him on Fox Sports 1 in the morning from 7.30 to 9.30 a.m. on the Craig Cart Show. And there's just another, there's another handsome gentleman. Um, by the way, of Jackson, Mississippi, his name is J.J. Williams. Extremely authentic and centric by his own rights. Uh, but at the same time, he uh, always delivers, if you will. J.J., we are here. We are doing it. And I'm glad you decided to do it with me. I'm happy about everything we've accomplished this far. But there's yeah. one thing we didn't accomplish. We didn't What's accomplish everything? a show. So You're here's right. the show. You're right. We got it. This is what the people been asking for, Big Willie. We giving it to them. They want to hear what the men got to say. They want to see what, what's up in our minds. Got done to hear from the bells. Got done to, but they need a chance to hear from the bells, men. Man, uh, the Bell Collective has wrapped up season three. Those who are fans of the show, I am the husband of Aikisha Cologne. Uh, Holly, Aikisha Holly Cologne, right? Let me not mess that up. Um, and JJ, uh, is the husband of So Gucci, the fabulous, the wonderful So Gucci. Yes, sir. Uh, we uh we have wrapped up season three. Uh, there's three reunion shows. We have uh, officially seen two of them. There's one more to go, and that's going to be next week. Oh yes. Uh, there's a lot. <laughs> this is just uh, like after watching. I've watched episode one of the reunion show. I've watched episode two of the reunion show. Um, and it's just it's. It's a it's a whole nother world outside of the show. It really is because so many relationships, narratives, storylines, uh, dynamics, things that people are finding out that we, you know, the cast, we just didn't know. Right. I I think this season for me, because we've uh, me and my wife uh, joined the this, this show last season. You have been on longer than I. Um, expectations. Let's talk. Let's talk right there before we can take a deep dive into everything that's going on. Expectations. I, I expected, um, I, I, I expected the heavy lift, right? Love, you know, dealing with my family, um, being in the reality world, the comments, the people you meet, the new audience. Um, I expected my wife to shine. I thought she's done an, she's done an amazing job thus far. Um, what I didn't expect was, I guess the the amount of energy that goes into it. Exactly. Oh, it's a lot of energy, Big Willie, because like you say, I have already been on the reality, you know, with the hit TV show Bring It with my daughters, Sanjay and the Twin Star Sky. So I already know what the ins and outs of you. And I'm gonna tell you, Big Willie, you you gotta have a strong mind, got done in it, and, you know, to deal with this, because boy, it's a lot gonna come at you. It's a lot to come with it. And I think it's different from you, uh, from this standpoint. Because you're, you, that's home base for you, right? Like me, I'm an implant. My wife is from Jackson, Mississippi. Um, she was, you know, born and raised. Obviously, if you've been following the show, uh, those who know about the show, and I got to introduce it quickly because the show is the premise of uh, the show: business women within the state of Jackson, Mississippi, who are are trying to exactly. balance work, love, life, family, and everything else. Um, and then we have brought them all together right. um, and we're kind of intermingled in within this one city. Uh, me being an implant. Right. And you guys, everybody else is from Jackson, Mississippi, and has has pretty much dealt with, you know, the the, the history, the, 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 the this what the city has to offer, what it doesn't have to offer. Um, a lot of you guys have been able to thrive and survive within Jackson, Mississippi. So I'm kind of looking uh, from the outside in. But now that I have been a part of Jackson and, you know, I was married in Jackson. Uh, I know a lot about my, my my wife's family's history. I've embodied a lot of what Jackson is, is blue collar, hardworking, good down home people. And I love all that. Yes, sir. Um, but the energy Most for definitely. me is it hasn't been. It's been a lot from the standpoint, like not just in front of the cameras, dealing with production, dealing with storylines, dealing with people who, to be honest, I would have never I, I would have never met or probably talked to. Right. Like, be honest with JJ, the yeah. first scene, we, the first scene we did, I told you, you took my breath away. <laughs> But I'm glad to know I can take your breath away, Big Willie. Got done. At least you weren't getting the breath knocked out of you like y'all done it when you're on the field, got done it, and you get the wind knocked out. Yeah, it was, and, and it was crazy about it. I was sitting there. I was just like, uh, what is that? Who Who is this dude? Who's this grown man with bedazzled jeans and bobos and these thick-ass bifocals? I was like, who, what is this? 
I'm authentic, Big Willie. Got that. Hey, I'm one of a kind. One thing, even in school when I was coming up, I'm I'm me. You know, I never tried to be like nobody else. Got that. What you see is what you get. Either you're going to like me, you're not, because I, I'm the type of person I don't care. I don't try to fit in. Got that. I just be me. And then you're going to love it, or either you ain't got that. Because, hey, I'm one of a kind. Got that. I'm like a neat in the um, that. So, look, 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 quick, 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 before we get right into everything. Um, what didn't what didn't you expect or expect? Like, what's, where was your expectations going into Bell Collective, and what you didn't expect now that you're here, uh, being a part of Bell Collective? Well, the one thing I like about Bell Collective is, like I say, uh, the difference between the first reality show and this reality show. Uh, it was basically about the kids, but you know, you still had a lot of drama still going on with the grown folks, you know. And uh, this on the Bell Collective is, you know, it, it, it's more, you know, of a grown folks deal without the children involved it's mm-hmm. on the grown folks level so you you're gonna get it you, you know you really can cuss on the other stuff you're cussing on this people back and forth doing things i mean yeah. it's real reality i mean what you see every day is what you get i mean it ain't nothing that you just making up or something you know it's your everyday life so you gotta have a strong mind that's what i was saying if you got there and they got a strong mind ain't no need of you getting on the reality because any kind of got their dirt or whatever a person can pull up you got so many different personalities People want to get down there, be the mm-hmm. man or the woman, got down there, and they're going to come out with all kind of dirty dishes, got down there, to make themselves, got down there, look good. And that's what you get when you're getting on the reality when they're dealing with grown folks. All right, JJ, I want to jump right into this. Um, we wrapped up season three. Uh, episode two of the reunion show is under wraps. So much was, I think last night was pretty much like, whoa, like it was just like, hold on, like it was oh, just yeah. a lot going on. Um, on from a lot of different names, um, but I want to I want to talk about you uh, and your well, not so much you. I want to talk about so Gucci and Latrice, right? Um, oh yeah. One of the focuses within this season was real estate, right? Um, there's obviously a relationship between so Gucci and Latrice because same hometown, they know each other, they've been around each other. They, at one point, they looked like they were homegirls. They was they was going to be like the Wonder Twins at one point. Exactly, right? most of that. Um, then there's the narrative, right? There's a story lined up. You know, when you're doing business with friends, it can become tricky, right? And yes. it did, right? Yes. Do you think Latrice did anything wrong by working with another realtor? My thing is, what's the one thing got done that a woman love more than a man or anything in life? Money. So mm. I don't give a darn if it's two cents, a dollar, or whatever the situation. That's that just they that's a that's their bottle. I'm just gonna be honest with you. That's a bread and butter. So my thing is, did you you ask me? Do I think she did it wrong? Yes. Got done it? Did she do it wrong? I mean, hell to the yes. I mean, I mean that's plain and simple, man. You don't sit there and waste somebody time. And got down and make them think that you working with them in order to be working with another realtor. Come on, man. You don't do that right there. Especially got down it when you sitting there thinking y'all cool and everything. You know, I could kind of fit, you know, think of the way so Gucci was thinking. She was thinking, you know, look at this my girl or whatever, you know, we we buddy, 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 or whatever. You know, I get her sign a contract later. Matter of fact, you know, they working on a goddamn building where they trying to be it and they and they going back and forth with the other guy that got the building so and so gucci man she think they stuck on that building she didn't tell her let's try to find another building let's go now they said well we're gonna wait on this one because eventually they'll come down and we'll go ahead and get the building but why are you waiting you ain't telling this woman so gucci that you working with another realtor because you could have told so gucci uh look here while we waiting on that, just go ahead and uh, try to find me another one. But that's not the understanding you got with her. So now you're playing back and you playing both sides. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, you don't waste a person's time. You could have easily say it, even if you want to go with somebody. Look here. So, Gucci, I'm working with you, but I'm letting you know I got somebody else looking for me as well. Understanding the best thing in the world. All you got to do is just be straight up about what you're doing. And I'm sure it wouldn't have been no kind of conflict of interest. Cause so Gucci got there slinging houses, got there selling them, got done it all on house hunter, got done it selling houses, got done it every damn thing. So that's a big thing by itself. So my thing, it ain't the point of got done it missing out on that money. It's the point of how you do it. You got to be, you know, the lawyer to, to the situation. And that's what made the thing so suspicious and so bad. I mean, it could have been handled a better way. What's crazy is I have experienced a lot of that. Um, yeah. Anytime you mix money, business, and family, if transparency and communication isn't at the forefront 
of just being like, hey, this is what I want. This is what I expect. This is what I want to do. If any of that gets mixed up in the, along the way, I'm going to tell you right now, it becomes messy, right? It's because there's an expectation as long as we have this friendship or this 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 relationship that you're always going to do right by me. That just is ex- expected. When that doesn't happen, that's when like, all right, well, what kind of shit you on? There you go. <laughs> now that way y'all coming up with the term Mississippi messy. That's what that is. <laughs> Mississippi messy. And, and that, it did get messy. It exactly. Did. And so it's 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 interesting how that all turned out. Well, Big Willie, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. I mean, I was on Twitter last night and I was looking at a lot of stuff. And I'm gonna be honest with you, Big Willie. A lot of stuff came up about you. And one of the guys, well, a lot of the questions was up on Twitter is do Big Willie think he's better than Cliff? I mean, a lot of stuff was like, is Big Willie got down there better than Cliff? Do he think he better than the Bells, man? Do he think he above me, Glenn, Cliff, and every goddamn thing? And and the people on there want to know, Big Willie, do you think you better than Cliff and everybody else up on the show? Because they feel like maybe from, by you being from the Bronx, we from Mississippi, they want to know, do you think you better than the country, that country folks got down there from Mississippi, <laughs> God darn it? No, and this is interesting because I, I I do appreciate the question. And I was uh so I don't know how I, I think you do the same thing. You were so Gucci. I watched the reunion show, and I also have my phone on my hand. I'm also interacting with Twitter. Um, if those who are part of the social media world, there's nothing better than Black Twitter because <laughs> <laughs> Black Twitter will, will will read you your read you your rights. Uh, they will they will chew the meat off the bone. They will oh. expose you. They will attack you in ways you just never see they coming. They um, and then they will defend you, right? They, there's others that will come to your t- defense of like, hey, Willie, you're right, you're wrong, da-da-da. So you get to, you get to engulf all that. Fast forward. Um, listen, do I so think I'm is, yeah. better? Yeah, Why do, I, do you think you better? That's what they want to know. They, the, right now, they probably say you're going around the question. They want to know, do you think you're better than everybody else? I don't think I'm better than anybody, but I have standards. Okay. I have standards and I have expectations. Um, being somebody who is college educated, um, decorated on the field, having won a Super Bowl, won a Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a long career in the NFL, um, I consider, consider myself a man in the community. I'm employed by Fox. Um, I am a father of two. I am a husband. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. Um, I consider myself a leader in the community. I, I work closely with two foundations, one with my own, the William and Nakisha uh, Cologne Foundation. I wear many titles. I yeah. have many hats. So somebody's listening is like, all right, that's not answering the question, Willie. Do you think you're better than X, Y, Z? I don't think I'm better. I just have a clear understanding of what I'm willing to do and what I'm not willing to do. Gotcha. Even though we're not we, – being a part of a reality show, you don't control the editing, but I do have the right to control the narrative. You because my name, my name is – confidence. Yeah. You confidence. My confidence – yeah, my confidence and my, my moxie or my, my air, if you will, if it rubs you the wrong way, that's a you thing. Uh, because I, I live – I try to strive and live – in an excellent manner. I'm always, I try to always put myself to be the best. Right. And so joining the show, I knew part of being a part of reality TV is is some messiness comes with it. There's some things you're willing to uh, indulge in and some things you're not. I'm going to be honest. I don't have anything gift. I don't have anything against cliff. I don't. (laughs) Um, Do I understand what he's talking about half the time? No, I really don't. I was actually there last night when he was talking (laughs) about the dog and the puppy. What, what the hell does that even mean to me? Like, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even understand what that means. You said the puppy grow up to the big dog, the dog go into the puppy, and then you, you grow up and you be the big dog. You, you know what he's saying? Help me. As you as you said that, <laughs> my mind computed none of that. What was I, I'm he trying, trying to, to say? Figure that out too, Big Willie. I, I, I don't understand. I had to get with him one day, and we had to ask him about that. And I understand, like, people have their different quirks and sayings and kind of deliveries, right? I'm, a, I'm, 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 I'm into all that. But sometimes Cliff says things and I'm just like, anybody, everybody help me. Right. I'm, I feel like I feel like your first day in like French class, you're like, listen, you got your you got your like, you're like well, what verb was that? What? So I feel like that. Um, no, I don't I don't feel like I'm I'm better than anybody, but I do hold myself to a standard um, exactly. being somebody. And, 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 I, and I just want to pivot. And I just want to focus solely on Cliff. Like think about what we've seen out of Cliff and, 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 and it showed last night. Mm hmm. This is a man who openly said uh, in a conversation with his own wife talking about, hey, 
um, you're not my equal, right? Exactly. That's what he said. That's yeah. not me making. That's not me, you know, talking mess. Um, he also went on to say, say, yeah. He also went on to say, like, hey, um, you know, in reference to, uh, I forgot what he was talking about, the whole Josh situation, right? Oh, like, yeah. I don't, I don't know I'm who's right or wrong. When I say run, you run. Yeah. Like yeah. when you say something like to like, however you feel about Josh is how you feel, but that's another exactly. man, right? That's yeah. not a little boy. That's a grown, exactly. that's a man in my eyes. Right. It, you're right. Um, so that's, that's how I feel about that. What Josh did yeah. say, you can't get down to do me like you do your wife. He did. He did. Right. And, and whether, whatever that implication means, right? Yeah. Like whatever. So, there's things that how Cliff rolls and operates that I necessarily don't agree with, but also being an employer, uh, employee of Fox, uh, being a man in the community. With all that said, I have to carry myself a certain type of way because, you know, I love to be fun. I like to have jokes. I like to be silly willy at times and okay. and, and kind of get all over the place. But I, I still kind of have to hold myself to a certain standard. So if I feel like things and narratives are beneath me, I'm just not going to indulge. It doesn't mean I don't like you. It exactly. doesn't mean like I have any malice towards you. Just like that's that's you not what I do. Standards. You just right. have certain standards you abide by. And so that's where I'm at. And also, and this is what's most important, JJ. Mm -hmm. I'm a father of two. Most I have definitely. one son and I have one daughter. Or well, at least you got both. Right. <laughs> well, my point is from, and I'm talking about the narrative and what we project on screen and how exactly. we're being portrayed. I don't ever want my son to ever feel like there's a narrative with me putting my hands on his mother. You know what I mean? Um, when they showed the screen, when they, sh when they mm -hmm. showed a shot of um, uh, Cliff, you know, pretty much grabbing Latrice is like rub by the arm. Um, I don't want my, I don't want, want, want my son to see that. Right. And I also exactly. don't want my daughter to see that. Right. Yeah. So that's, that, that, that's something. Um, well, let me ask you, what, do it make a difference if you don't have children? Cause you know, they don't have kids together. No, it does. It, it does. You, you wouldn't want your son or daughter to see that. Yeah. I, I don't want my daughter and son to see that, but I also, even if we didn't, I won't want that to be a represent, representation of me and Akeisha's marriage either. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. That's that's where I'm at with that. Okay. So, but it, I'm talking about it means more for me that whatever we portray on TV, that is not we don't we're not trying to be the Huxtables, but mm -hmm. but we're trying to promote black positive uh, a black positive uh, marriage. Uh, exactly. We're trying to put, we're trying to promote a healthy family. Um, and by the way, hands up, me and Akeisha argue, right? We fight. We 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 have we go at each other like like two dogs sometimes. Oh yeah, most definitely. But that's that's a marriage, right? We work it out. I believe it, and that's why I'm not judging their marriage. But there's a perception, and I, and listen, let me freak it a little bit. Sometimes perception is your reality, mm -hmm. at least how people perceive it, right? Exactly. And so I I have two kids who are one day going to grow up and watch the show because they're on the show, and they're going to go back and look at the episodes or whatever along the way. I would never want that on TV. Something happened during the, during the show. Mm -hmm. um, even on Twitter that I was quite shocked about. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. Yes, sir. Uh, on Twitter, people were coming at my head. Uh, people were not happy with our outfits, in particular mine. Yeah. People was like, Willie has this, you know, he talks about he's from New York and and, and this and that. But yet uh, he has a zoot. Somebody said I had a zoot suit on. <laughs> yeah, because I'm going to be honest. That was my next question right there, Big Willie. Twitter got done and was sitting there talking about your suit now when yeah. I, I thought you looked it nice i thought you were <laughs> taylor may got done it boy when i saw you got done it when we first stepped out in the hall i'm like god damn willie i'm gonna be honest you were cleaning fish pussy i'm just being honest with you got done it i'm just <laughs> telling the idea but the people on twitter for some reason i don't think if you got some haters out there or somebody just wanted to say something just to be saying it but they did not like your suit they didn't like my suit they actually called they it country. They even called your suit country, will it? They called my they suit country. They you look like you from Mississippi country or something. I'm like, what What that both mean? Because I know Mississippi can get clean. So I'm trying to figure out where they got there and got that from. That's the reason I'm trying to figure out. Is that somebody up in your hometown? Where they coming with this? And no, people were chopping my head off about the fact that I had this big ass, they called it zoot suit, which made me laugh. And on top of that, they was just like, how can he think somebody, how can he think he's better than somebody with that, with that country ass suit? Yeah. And I was just like, damn. I was just like, <laughs> when I put that suit on that day and I, and I looked in the mirror, I said, okay, big fella, this one is going to get him. Most I definitely. I think you got him. <laughs> oh, no. I told they undefeated on this guy on social media and Twitter, babe. 
We're going to take a quick break, uh, a small break, um, and we're going to dive into some other things. I got a question for you, JJ. Uh, there's a famous comedian we both know and love, um, actor and comedian, by the way, who showed up on the Shannon Sharp podcast uh, and dropped a hot hot bag of what the fuck on the table, and he has some receipts. We're going to dive into that. Come on back. Uh, thank you. Thank you for everybody that's watching right now. Uh, JJ has a big following. I have a solid following. Um, us being Bell Collective, uh, part of the cast, we call ourselves, consider ourselves Bellmen, if you will. So this yes, the, this is the Bellmen talking, if you will. Um, yeah. JJ, man, there's a comedian who I know you love and I love, uh, was recently on the Shannon Sharp podcast. It's called Club Shay. Hmm. Um, the world-renowned, the actor, the comedian, Cat Williams came, slayed, and delivered, and in, in, in every facet, he looked like he looked like Santa. He came in with a big bag, he dumped all his shit on the table, and had receipts for everybody. Man, yes, he did. Um, one of the things he he did that I thought was interesting is, as I mentioned, he 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 had things to say, and he came with receipts. But I think he 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 put a, he put a lot of pr- I don't want to use the word pressure. He put a lot of pressure on comedians who we've grown to love and comedians oh, yeah. that are trying to make their way right now. Um, he talked about pretty much plagiarism. He talked about stealing styles and authenticities and um, not giving people flowers like Bernie Mac, who's pretty much was the one, if if not the funniest king of uh, the, comedy, the, one of the yeah. funniest kings uh, on the show, if you will. Exactly. But there's one thing that I, I kind of it's interesting because I as much as I loved what he had to say and it was interesting and he was he was dynamic. Um, I try to put my my foot on. Uh, I try to sit on the other side of the fence. And what I mean by that, exactly. if I'm Steve Harvey, right, if I'm Cedric uh-huh. the Entertainer, even if I'm Kevin Hart, who I know and love, um, do you respond to it or do you say that's that's beneath me? I'm not going to entertain it because Kevin Hart had said something when asked about you know, his thoughts on the whole Cat Williams things or what Cat Williams had to say, he pretty much said, Hey, um, you can either watch the circus or you can entertain the circus. There you go. Exactly. And, and I thought that was brilliant. Right. Because I, cause I, that's very, that's very poignant to what me and you are dealing with exactly. within the show. Right. Like we can entertain everything we hear and say about us Most or of we can just sit back and watch. Right? Exactly. I think if anybody deals with that, on the show more uh, well you, i think you and so Gucci deal with it more than me and akisha right exactly. um but your your storyline this year is different because it's family right mm-hmm. and there's levels to it there's exactly. substance there's depth um there's just kind of there's just kind of like ooh, like you could like <laughs> this is kind of like even if you're watching it you don't entertain it you kind of sit like me person i was just like oh here it comes yeah, exactly. you know I mean? <laughs> um talk about that can okay. you talk about how, especially this at this point in in in, in the show in this season, um, even though we wrapped up season season three once again of Bell Collective, there's still part of your storyline with your family, your girls, the whole Selena situation. As much as I love you, I'm like best of luck, Jay. Exactly, <laughs> I know it. With, with Big Willie, it's it's funny you ask that right there because it's like Cat Will you say, it's like your boy say, God damn it. Either you can get down and watch the circus or you can entertain it. And I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of times, man, you got a lot of people that be pulling for stuff, pulling for stuff, mm-hmm. pulling for stuff. They started playing tug of war with you, trying to pull something out you that just ain't there. And, you know, you you can't get caught up in what people got down and think or say because they're going to have their own, own opinion about whatever situation and whoever it is and ain't nothing you can do about it. You just got to do what make you comfortable because I, you can do a thousand a million things right, and it still ain't gonna be enough for some of these haters out here, goddamn it, that just wanna pull you up under the goddamn table. So you gotta do what's best for you. So when I mean by that, you can't get caught up in what the people are saying or what they're doing. They got their own opinion. You can't do enough, goddamn it, to be right in somebody's eyes that just feel some kind of way about you in a way for no reason. That's just crazy in a way. So they didn't like Jesus. 
I mean, you had certain people. Jesus was the guy down the purest man in the world, and they talked about him. So mm-hmm. if they talked about him, what makes you think in the world you got one chance or somebody got down not talking about you? How can you be right in somebody else's eyes and they got down to sit there and talk about Jesus too? You can't do it. But so Jay, you got to make yourself happy. Not to cut you off, I think it's interesting for me looking at you and your relationship with your girls, so Gucci and obviously Selena. Um, you're kind of the focal point of it all because mm-hmm. of your relationships with in all three of those, right? Obviously, you're exactly. a father, a husband, and you have an ex. Most um, definitely. Exactly. Well, I'm gonna break it down like this to you, Big Willie. See, you got people that certain fans or certain people. I got my fans, the girls got their fans, my ex got her fans, and you know, you got all them that's gonna conject and take sides and do what they want to do, but they don't what they don't realize is I came up. I I'm the one sat there and tried to give a better lifestyle for my daughters and and put myself aside so I can make sure that they have the best. And that's what people don't realize. See, you know, when you got fans got done and they on the outside talking about stuff they don't know about, you know, you can't you can't you can't sit there and and, and talk about or, 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 or sit there, got done and, and ball you can't entertain that stuff you can't entertain that stuff you you as long as you know what's going on and the people around here in the city know what jj got done and did i'm like got done what you said about that circus i ain't got to entertain it i'm gonna i'm you just sit back and you watch the circus you don't entertain it because i know what i have done and i'm gonna be honest with you you know they're my, my daughter's mama and one thing i learned as a man it don't matter you can bring them up from a baby. They mama got done it and they can stay gone if they want to out of their life 50 years, 40 years. But one thing about it, it'll never take mama place. Mama gonna always be first. It don't matter what you do. Mama gonna always be first. That's one thing I learned. So one thing as a man, I learned as long as you do everything you can to build that foundation, to get done and get your children to where they need to be at in life. Your job is done, whichever direction they go. Uh, episode three uh, of the reunion show will oh, will yeah. expose a lot, man. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to see it. Oh, um, my goodness. It's I wasn't, be, you know, I actually, really. just for everybody out there, when you were, when, when the girls got on stage um, and it was you and so Gucci and the girls, I was backstage. They, they, they moved me off the set. So I didn't see anything. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm watching everything for the first time and I'm hearing everything for the first time. So I'm extremely excited to see it. But at the same time, I'm like, whoa. You went in the back, God damn it. Oh, my goodness. You know, we were yeah. closed off and it, it was real tense then. Well, but like I, I say, a lot of things they was doing, you know, it's, a, it's out of hurt and anger then, you know, but that's what happened when you get involved, when you need to stay neutral. And, you know, that. Hopefully what people see, they can get a learner out of it and, and, and know, OK, well, this how I need to do, you know, start, you know, when, when it comes to minds or whatever, you know, we need to do this different so we don't get to that point or whatever. See, this our show got done. It's about learning as well, helping got done it and everyday life. And, you know, it shows you the do's and don'ts of what not to do and what not to don't, because like I say, we human just like everybody else. So, you know, you might think, you know, you're living this perfect lifestyle, but we still go through things just like everybody else. But like I say, it ain't going to be sunshine always. You're going to have a storm, but got done as soon as that storm over with the sun going to pop back out and it just make you appreciate it more. I know it was real. Most um, definitely. When you was on stage with your daughters and so Gucci, because my wife and my wife is a little bit of a cry baby, meaning like she she's she's an emotional being. She's a firecracker. Mm-hmm. Like she feels everything. My wife came back and her makeup was running because yeah. she was on set and she was crying her heart out. She oh, yeah. y'all were not there. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't there. Um, right. But I remember my wife saying like, "Man, that was the most real uh, in your face. It, it was a lot for her to bear." And my wife most is a definitely. very strong woman, but she says she broke down multiple times um, solely because of what she saw on stage between you and your daughter. So uh, everybody out there, those who watch this, uh, watching this, uh, the the last show of the reunion show is coming up this Friday. Um, JJ, I love you. You know, but it it's heavy. Um, it's been fun. Oh, yes, sir. Episode one in the books. Yes. We got a lot to come. Uh, we're going to have guests. We're going to continue to talk about the Bells. And the show and the dynamics and all the storylines and headlines. Um, the last episode of the reunion show is coming up this Friday. 
Don't miss it. Uh, Ooh, yes. JJ, you will be front and center for that. Pray for me, Big Willie. I, I will. Need, I need you got darn it. Might, you might have to throw the white towel in for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm going to pray for you, man. And um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for watching. And thank you for enjoying me and JJ. This is the Why Willie Podcast Show. Till next time. See you next week.